Dean Pirro, thanks for being with us tonight. And thanks to all of you for once again making justice number one last weekend. And let's go for it again tonight. Trump 2020 senior advisor Laura Trump is here standing by. You don't want to miss that. Plus, Dan Bongino, RNC chair Ronna McDaniel, Greg Jaron, John Solomon, Dana Lash, and much more all packed into this hour. But first, my open. We're reaching, we're reaching a turning point that will forever determine our future, how we live our lives and how our children will live theirs. The gap between the ever-widening left and right has never been wider, and yet amazingly, it continues to widen. Every time we turn on the TV, open a laptop, or listen to the radio, another bizarre, offbeat, outlandish idea brings us closer to socialism and the destruction of capitalism and is being pushed by the left. So you have a decision to make. Do you want to live in a country where no matter how hard you work, what you do, or how much you succeed, you simply won't improve your lot? Do you want to benefit from your own success or would you prefer the government take over and use your benefit to pay everyone else? In the last few weeks, the left has removed its moderate mask to show its true socialist colors as they cheer laws that allow for the killing of babies already born and born alive, giving the mother the right of a thumbs up or thumbs down like an emperor in the Roman Colosseum. And every one of the 2020 Democrat presidential candidates supports the Green Deal proposed by a freshman congresswoman so knowledgeable about Washington that she thinks she came here to sign bills. Which Green Deal will literally pull planes out of the sky. No issue, I guess since the left is happy with the influx coming in through our southern border. No air travel required for them. This Green Deal, supported by Booker and Harris and Sanders and Gillibrand and Warren, requires that every building in America be rebuilt for environmental reasons and that high-speed rail be developed so that air travel becomes unnecessary. The Green Deal foresees Medicare for all and considers a deficit not that big a deal because, according to Ocasio-Cortez, we can just print more money. You know what? You should have left your Monopoly game home when you came to Washington. But my favorite part is where they seek a net zero greenhouse gas in 10 years. So you may ask why net zero as opposed to zero? The reason is that they're not sure they'll be able to get rid of bovine flatulence. I can't believe I was just saying this. AKA cows farting. These emissions from cows are a concern to the left because these bovine emissions have an environmental impact and the methane gas produced by the bovine flatulence contributes to the greenhouse gases that contributes to global warming. <laughs> Need I say more? And their hypocrisy. It knows no bounds as they hang on to dear life, political life, albeit, in the state of Virginia, where the governor and the attorney general dressed in blackface, and the governor comes out and says that he's now going to explore the issue of white privilege and pursue an agenda of racial reconciliation. Talk about trying to deflect an issue from yourself to everyone else. And he even says it was a terrible week for Virginia. No, Governor, it was a terrible week for you. And now, Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax is accused of forcible sexual assault and forcible rape. Although 
The date of one attack was 16 years ago, and the other 15 years ago, the victims have a very specific recollection. One asked classmates who corroborate her immediate outcry that Fairfax raped her. One victim remembers the date, the time, the place, and telling her classmates. One involves a doctor who says that she was forced to perform oral sex on Lieutenant uh, Governor Fairfax. And although she did not bring it up until years later, it's a far cry from the demands of the left that Brett Kavanaugh remove himself as a candidate for the Supreme Court for something that allegedly happened more than 35 years ago with an alleged victim who didn't remember where it happened, when it happened, and who never reported it to anyone. Fairfax's victim has the date, place, time. So what I want to know is, where are the Democrat senators who turn the Constitution on its head for Kavanaugh, saying that all women need to be believed? Now, where are all the women in their pink hats? Where are the women who suffered sexual assault storming the doors of that Kavanaugh for their own distress? I guess if the accused is a Democrat, the rules don't matter. And so it seems that Democrats don't care if someone is in blackface, happens to be a Democrat, or if someone accused of sexual assault happens to be a Democrat, or if a baby is murdered after it is born. This is a group that actually sits on their hands when the president of the United States says he wants to stop human trafficking. A group that sits on their hands when the president says he wants to end childhood cancer. And they sit on their hands when he says he wants to have a plan to eradicate AIDS. Who are these people who are more hateful of one man, our president, that it matters not that he wants to protect babies or stop human trafficking or eradicate AIDS? I'll tell you who they are. They are people who don't care about us. They only care about power and making sure that they keep it. And for all of you who can't make sense of why normal thinking people would not support a border and not care if illegals, including MS-13 members, come into our country, you need to understand that this group knows that they have lost Americans. And their only hope is to get immigrants and illegals into our country so that they can maintain their power base. And if you think socialism will never happen in this country, just take a look at what has happened in the last 10 days and ask yourself that question one more time. And that's my open. Let me know what you think on my Facebook and Twitter at Judge Janine. And joining me now to discuss my opening statement and so much more, Trump, Trump 2020 senior advisor, Lara Trump. Good evening, Lara. That was quite an open, Judge Janine. I loved it. Uh, thanks, Laura. I appreciate it. You know, Laura, as you sat there and I and I saw you uh, uh, in the gallery, and you you watched as your father-in-law, the president, discuss things that any right-thinking person, American or not, would be in support of. Whether it's trying to get rid of you know childhood cancer, which has been something that that your husband Eric has been involved in since I think he was 20 years old. Uh, I yeah. mean, did you sit there stunned when you realized that it was so anti-Trump, that group, that they couldn't even applaud or stand up? Well, but this is what these people have done forever. The, the, what has happened in this country is that the left would rather see the country fail than see the president succeed. So they don't want to stand for anything that he's saying, whether or not it, it makes sense and the rest of the country is behind him. I thought it was appalling. I thought it was shocking. First of all, let me say, of all the speeches I have ever heard my father-in-law give, I thought that State of the Union was the absolute best I have ever heard. And, and by the way, to get the entire group of people in that chamber up on their feet shouting USA, USA at one point, 
No one but Donald Trump could do that. But honestly, it, it was really shocking to see the number of people who did not react at moments like you are talking about when a, a little girl from St. Jude who has battled cancer was there in her in, in their presence. When so many of the things you just outlined were said and they, they sat down and, and they wanted nothing to do with it only because it came from this president. It's really appalling. It, it is appalling and it's shocking. And I believe there was a C, CBS poll that said 76 percent of Americans thought the speech was uh, a great speech. So, I mean, your relationship to the president has nothing to do with the fact that so many people thought the same thing about the speech. But, you know, when when the, the, the sex trafficking that the Democrats seem to be so interested in the human trafficking in stopping seems not to be an issue and, you know, the, the the left is not caring about issues that are almost issues that they were the first to talk about. It has to make Americans feel like they don't really care about us. They're more interested in their own power. It's not even about the left and the right. It's about the people versus the people in Congress. Yeah, and you see so much of this. You saw the president, by the way, during the government shutdown, offering something that the Democrats a year ago said they couldn't live without. Let's take care of the DACA recipients. They didn't even come to the yeah. White House to sit down and negotiate with him because, Janine, as you're saying, they don't even care. It's all about a power play for them. That's all you're seeing. The good news is that the president is fighting every single day for the American people. He understands the right thing to do for this country. These same people, they are such hypocrites. A couple of years ago, under a different president, were all for a wall, all for border security. And now again, yep. this president proposes it, and they have to be against it. It's lunacy, and I think the American people are smarter than that, and I think they're seeing through it. You know, when the president made the statement about socialism and he said we will never be a socialist country, it was a statement that was um, it was very advanced. I mean, no one has really talked about it, but we're seeing it creep into uh, the national discussion. We're seeing it creep into the laws. We're seeing candidates, even candidates running for president who are socialists. Um, it is. Do you think that the average American is concerned about socialism? Or do they think it's just it can't well, they, happen here? They, they sure ought to be, because you have people, as you're saying, running on a socialist platform. I think the problem is that there are so many people in this country that do not fully understand what socialism means and what it would mean for this country. Janine, let me name a few countries for you that, that these people might know, and, and it, they all, we're all socialist countries. The USSR, China, Cuba, most recently Venezuela, where people are starving to death, eating dog and cat food to survive. It's something that every American should really take seriously. This is almost full government control of everything. Here we have a president who is deregulating things, taking the government out of most things, and you see our country thriving. You see the economy booming. These people want to do the opposite. They want government to control essentially everything. It's a step away from communism and a dictatorship mm -hmm. in some senses. It's very serious. Yes. It's very scary. And if you don't fully understand it, do some research. We do not want socialism happening in the United States of America. Our founding fathers would be rolling over in their grave if they knew that these people were serious and they were really running on these platforms. And they are. That's the scariest part. And they are. And they're openly running on it. Anyway, Laura Trump, thanks so much for being with us tonight. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And joining me now, making a rare solo appearance on Justice, our friend Fox News <laughs> contributor Dan Bongino. How are you, Dan? Hey, doing great. Yeah, where's Chris tonight? What is he having some adult sodas out there or something? You need to know. <laughs> no, we just <laughs> wanted to talk to you solo tonight. You know, Dan, one of the yeah. things that that there is a lot of discussion about now is, you know, that by uh, that bipartisan, bicameral group seems to be uh, uh, coming up with some kind of a uh, a deal that, according to the New York Times, doesn't look too good in terms of money for a wall, uh, and it also it 
terms of anything more than $1.3 billion, uh, although they, some say it can go up to $2 billion. The, the, the issue, it appears, on this committee, they never heard from ICE. They never heard from Immigration Customs Enforcement, because they didn't want to hear from them. Is that like an yeah. omen? Does that foretell us what's happening? Yeah, it does. I, you know, Judge, I hear that. I'm glad you brought this up, actually, because you see this a lot on this network when we debate liberals. They'll say things like, uh, you know, well, so a lot of experts said a wall isn't necessary. And you say, well, well, who are these experts? And, you know, sometimes they'll name a member of Congress. But then when you talk to actual experts, Judge, like Tom Homan on the network who actually ran the agency or Border Patrol agents mm -hmm. who deal with this every day, they're the ones that say, yes, we need this wall. So them avoiding the input of ICBP and otherwise is not surprising at all. But, you know, just think of this in common sense terms, Judge. You know, when you want an expert in micro-brewed beers, right, you go to a micro-brewed beer guy. You don't go to an orthopedic surgeon. He may be an expert on elbows. I got a bad one, but he doesn't know squat about micro brewed <laughs> beers. So this is standard operating procedure for the Democrats. Totally unsurprising. You know, one of the things that that I, is especially frustrating is the uh, the rumor or the suggestion that um, you know, look, the the left wanted to abolish ICE. I mean, there's no question about it, and and the, some yeah. of them are saying not a dime for ICE. But in addition to that. They want to eliminate some of the detention beds. Now, uh, you're in law enforcement. You know what that means. That yeah. means yeah. that when you eliminate the detention beds, you cannot keep them and you have to release them into the country. And there's some report that said as many as 30,000 could be released into the country. This is what the Democrats want. Why? Yeah. Well, they've committed themselves to open borders a long time ago, Judge. None of this is a mystery, but the facts and the data are not on the left side. They never are. Um, a, a large, large majorities of the people who are then released, even with these ankle monitors and other monitoring devices, cut them off and disappear for good, effectively creating a de facto open border situation. Listen, Judge, the left understood a long time ago, they're not stupid, that they've lost on the issues. People want economic liberty, control of their own health care, et cetera, right? So what do they do? They need open borders because they need voters in, a, in, a, in a basically an open-ended entitlement state. That's why they're in this. This is a pure power play. This has nothing to do with immigration with them. This is a pure power play on the left. Well, and, you know, as the left continues with this power play, I mean, one of the issues yeah. is that um, the, 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 the radical shift at, uh, by the yeah. left to now allow for the killing of babies after a baby is born, and they actually, I showed the, the audience in, in, in the yeah. open, they're actually applauding the passage of this law. I say to myself, what have we come to, Dan? Why are we in this place? Why do people allow for the acceptance of that kind of, 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 of thinking? Yeah, Judge, it's it's really one of the sadder moments I've seen in, in, in my, you know, 10, 15 years closely following and having run for office myself. Uh, look at this, you know, the, the termination of life now outside the womb. I, I mean, how many breaths do we have to take? This is a serious question before we're free from the legislative pen of the radical far left. We're, I mean, it's a serious question. How long do you have to be alive now? Are we going to have to measure it in weeks outside the womb? I mean, look at this Green New Deal, Judge. This is the most outrageous thing I've ever seen. I mean, you who you opened up the show. By the way, your opening was, Sarah, I was actually laughing. I'm sure they saw me in the control room. I was dying here laughing. But this is outrageous. We're, I mean, if, if they're, what are they going to be, cow assassination squads now? I mean, are you going to have oh, to yeah, give the cows next. Beano <laughs> to, to cure up their gastrointestinal <laughs> issues to prevent an and Alexandria you know what, Ocasio cortez death squad or something? I got to tell you, I think it's terrible because I worked in a dairy when I was a kid, and that's before they had the computers with that they were used to milk the cows. Anyway, Dan Punch, you know, Listen, we'll talk another Bert, I time. I saw you Thanks trying to being. hold it together in the beginning. You were having a tough time. You were going to laugh. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. All right. Take I'll care, Dan. Thanks for being with us. And Greg Jarrett, John Solomon, and Dana Loesch are all on deck tonight. But next, we'll continue the conversation. President Trump holding firm on his push for a border wall as the clock ticks down to a deadline for a real deal. RNC Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel is here in a justice. And Trump fired up tonight over the Democrats' refusal to compromise on border security. The president tweeting tonight that the Democrats just don't seem to want it. Joining me now 
now with Reaction Chair of the Republican National Committee, Ronna McDaniel. Uh, good evening, Chairwoman. Good to have you on, Justice. Uh, the president seems uh, very determined, and I think he knows uh, or smells what a lot of us are smelling, and that is that the so-called bipartisan committee that didn't want to hear from ICE, uh, uh, you know, is looking not so much to protect Americans, but is looking to allow people to come into the country by not providing for the steel slats and for eliminating some of the ICE detention beds, which allows uh, immigrants to just freely roam the country. What do you think? Well, the president's doing something that Democrats aren't doing, and he's listening to the ICE agents and the CBP agents and, and listening to what they're seeing on the border every day. And today, Janine, we just saw a CBP release that just in the past four months, 200,000 arrests have been made at the border. That is an 85% increase over the same time last year. So the president is exactly right. He is listening to the people on the front lines. We have a crisis. Democrats know it. They've known it for a long time. They want it to persist. And the president didn't come here to sit on his hands. He came here to solve problems. And he's going to get this done. Okay, just quickly, why? People say why. What's your take on why? Why does the well, left I, just sit on their hands? And they want porous borders. I do think that they want porous borders to help uh, get voters. I think they feel like if they have porous borders and they bring these people into this country and they show uh, that they'll let them in, that there'll be voters for them in the future, it changes the electoral map. You know, California now counts non-citizens in their census. This right. inflates their congressional representation. I mean, this is, a, this is a power play that Democrats have made. It is certainly not about the working men and women in this country, because as you uh, let people into this country and, and take more uh, of our hard earned earnings and give it to people with entitlements or, or other things that they're taking in education or health care, it's not good for our country. And the president is saying legal immigration is great. We have more jobs right now than we have people to fill it. Let's fix the illegal immigration and let's fix mm -hmm. legal immigration so we can bring people in based on merit, based on jobs that are open. That's the right way to do this. Democrats used to agree. This is ridiculous that they're standing uh, down on an important issue and it's making our country less safe. It, it certainly is. And, you know, today, I mean, a, another arm of this this left socialist leaning thinking, uh, when uh, Kristen Gillibrand, the senator from New York, who's one of the 2020 hopefuls, said that it was an urgent goal to eliminate private health insurance. What is she talking about and why? Well, you just talked about socialism and how it's creeping in. And this is how Democrats are bringing socialism into our country. They want government to take over our health care. 177 million people in this country right now are on private insurance plans. So what the Democrats are saying, now it's, now it's Kristen Gillibrand, before it was Kamala Harris, they're saying, we want to cancel all your private plans. We want the government to dictate to you your health insurance. And we do not want you to have a relationship with your doctor and make your choices based on your health health care uh, personally. And this is just an overreach. It's a government takeover of our health care, and it will bankrupt, bankrupt our country. This is another step towards socialism, and it shows how far left the Democrat Party has become. Very frightening. Ronna McDaniel, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thanks for having me. All right. And NRA spokesperson and radio show host Dana Lash still ahead tonight and next. Why was special counsel Robert Mueller once reportedly hauled into the FISA court? Investigative journalist John Solomon and Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett join me next to discuss new question on Mueller's past. The report says that the former FBI director was once forced to answer questions about allegations the FBI cheated on sensitive surveillance warrants. Investigative journalist John Solomon broke the story this week and joins me now, along with Fox News legal analyst and author of the Russia hoax, out this Tuesday in paperback, Greg Jarrett. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. Now, John Solomon, I, I got to tell you, I am always amazed that you get these things and get these stories and find out this information. When you talk mm -hmm. about in your latest article that Mueller was hauled before the FISA court, the very FISA court, that he is in a position as special counsel to oversee what Comey, his pal, and the rest of them did, I say to myself, this is truly the fox watching the hen house. Tell us 
what yeah. happened, John. Yeah, it's a great story, and it's very important for this reason. Remember when Devin Nunez first started asking questions about the FISA and possible omissions about Hillary Clinton funding it and uh, innocence of some of the people that were being targeted? James Comey, uh, Rod Rosenstein were all saying, listen, the process is so aggressive. The oversight is so amazing. There's no chance for any yeah. abuse. I'll calm down. Well, it turns out that system was pretty broken. We found out uh, through reporting that there were more than 75 instances in the early 2000s where the FBI submitted a FISA warrant in a counterterrorism, counterintelligence case, and it was erroneous. It had omitted information of innocence. Just all the things that we're now talking about in the 2016 uh, FISA warrant with Carter Page, it went on before and the court got so mad, the secret court got so mad, they hauled Bob Mueller in and said, you got us some explaining to do to us. How are you going to fix this? And he put some more procedures in place. And we now know from the 2016 case, those procedures were blown past and omissions and errors were in, uh, submitted to the court again, this time to target Trump and his campaign. But John, um, is there any way for us to know whether or not the FISA court is, 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 is claiming that any wrongdoing was done as it related to the 2016 situation, the way they hauled in Mueller yeah. for the mistakes that he made? You know, occasionally the court will release something publicly, but they've been remarkably silent for two years. And the president, in my recent interview yeah. with him, he mentioned that. Where's the court? A lot of the members in Congress are warning, where's the court? I think 2019 is a year where we might hear from them. Inspector General report comes out on this issue probably in the spring or early summer. That would be an opportune time for the court to finally tell us, do they think they were defrauded like the evidence suggests? All right, Greg Jarrett, I'm not going to waste your time with whether or not Mueller has a conflict of interest. <laughs> That's another issue. <laughs> yeah, but, it's a given. But, but tell me, wh who is in a position to say that Mueller should not be there, given the fact that he clearly has a conflict, that he clearly has done wrong before? He's left out information so much so that the secret, the most secretive court in the United States, right. has hauled him in and rebuked him. Well, it's too late now to remove him. He's at the end. Whitaker testified that, uh, you know, he has not interfered with Mueller and his investigation. Nobody has. But John's excellent reporting underscores something important. The FISA system is badly, egregiously broken. This is a secret court. It's not an adversarial process. Uh, it's reminiscent of the infamous star chambers in the 16th century Great Britain. Uh, it's inherently structured in a way that's unfair. And in this particular case, the, the Trump Carter Page spying by the FBI and the Department of Justice, I mean, they violated just about every rule that had been instituted. And the FISA court never even held a single hearing on this. They took paper submissions on it all because they have so many applications, an average of 29 a week. So they have to trust the honesty, the credibility, the integrity of people like James Comey, Andrew McCabe, Rod Rosenstein, Sally okay. Yates, who all concealed evidence and deceived the judges. All right. Well, you know, thank goodness for John Solomon's reporting. But, John, I'm going to go back to you. My favorite sure. guy is this guy, Adam Schiff, who's so <laughs> convinced that there is evidence that, you know, when we say there's no evidence, he says, well, it's coming out soon. John, tell us yeah. about your reporting on Adam Schiff and Glenn Simpson. Sure. You know, uh, we had a big moment this week. Uh, the Senate Intelligence Committee, through Richard Burr, the chairman, announced that they, they too, like uh, the House, had found no evidence of collusion with Russia. So as the evidence of collusion uh, with the Russia-Trump uh, investigation disappears, becomes just a political dirty trick, the evidence of Democratic collusion begins to grow. And so Glenn Simpson met this past summer with uh, Adam Schiff at the Aspen Security Council. He didn't tell anyone in the House Intelligence Committee. Uh, they claim it was small talk, but it's exactly the type of contact that two years ago he demanded that Devin Nunez disclose to the committee. So now his standard has boomeranged on him, hit him in the back of the head on this. I have a story coming out tomorrow. More than a dozen instances of Democrats involved in the dossier or in the investigation having contact with Russians. The story that's going to change is going to be Democratic collusion in 2019. All right, Greg, you got 10 seconds. How do we make that a story of Democratic collusion well, other than you're writing another book? Look, it's in my book, uh, Remarks right. uh, by Russians that said we were talking more with the Hillary Clinton campaign and Democrats than we were uh, with Republicans and Donald Trump. So, 
you know, yes, Interesting. collusion, but it's Hillary, Russia, FBI collusion, not Trump. All right, guys, John Solomon, Greg Jarrett, thanks so much for being with us tonight. And my next guest says Democrat presidential candidate Kamala Harris is an existential. Kamala Harris is a lot of things, a senator, a candidate for president, a former prosecutor. But my next guest said she's also a threat to your freedom. Joining me now, nationally syndicated radio host of The Dana Show and NRA spokesperson Dana Lash. Good evening, Dana. Why is... Is it Kamala or Kamala Harris, a threat, an existential threat to all of us? Well, and Judge Janine, always such a pleasure to join you on Saturday evening. And I, she, her policies, her socialist policies, and we need to use that word because that is the platform on which this woman stands. It does pose an existential threat to the very foundation of our republic. This is a woman who has come out against semi-automatic firearms. This is a woman who has come out for very, very far left socialist policies. And so this is why there are a lot of people, for instance, in our membership that, you know, maybe they're gun-owning Democrats, they don't feel as though they have a home in the Democrat Party anymore because it seems the name change from Democrat to socialist is all at this point simply a formality. So there are a lot of people that feel politically homeless, so to speak. And this is a woman who, and while the NRA focuses obviously on Second Amendment issues, you know, myself speaking, looking at how she, for instance, and I know you've discussed this, Judge Janine, how she's endorsed this green disaster policy that Democrats have come out with that literally talks about removing cows from planet Earth and getting rid of planes and the combustible engine, and I could go on and on. I mean, I, you can't get any, in, any more socialist or crazier than that. And Kamala Harris has endorsed that platform. She's endorsed that plan. You know, um, uh, Dana, what's interesting is, uh, about this is so many of the Democrats running for president in 2020 have endorsed it also, from Elizabeth Warren uh, to uh, uh, Sanders to Kristen Gillibrand to, uh, um, you know, to there's a few more, and, and uh, Kamala, Kamala Harris. I mean, they, they are openly socialist. I mean, they it doesn't matter, not hiding it anymore. And we just said a few yeah segments ago that Kirsten Gillibrand says it's it's an urgent uh, uh, need to get rid of private health care. Yeah, and, and, and it, this is the last, well, I said the last election, I said that the last election was the last time we were ever going to see anything close to a moderate Democrat in any kind of primary. When you look at the candidates that have pledged to run in 2020, these are all super far left, anti-gun, anti-individual freedom, I mean, anti pretty much everything that you know we come to love about being free in the United States of America. And these are their own words. This is what these individuals have, have stated. I call it the disarmament primary because that's exactly what it is. <laughs> And then even beyond that 2A issue, just looking at some of the stuff they endorsed, I wonder, have any of them taken a math class? I mean, when you look at that disastrous Green Deal, for instance, and when you actually get to the portion at the end of it, I think it's like six pages, they have zero way to pay for it at all. And, and the best, Judge Janine, the best is that now they're trying to defend it and say, well, actually, it was conservative media that put up all of this stuff in the plan. They removed it off of Alexandria Cortez's website, put up a different version and are trying to gaslight everybody in the United States of America that all of these claims were made up, except the Wayback Machine has archived all of it. Screenshots exist. I've seen it on her page. They cannot lie about this. Yep. It's hysterical that they're trying. It and, and in the last few seconds we have, I mean, can you think about how the Hollywood hypocrites, you know, they want all this, and yet they're not going to be able to even fly a commercial airline, forget a private airline. I mean, you know, do people think this isn't going to happen? Because if they have their way, it'll happen. Yeah, no, and you make it a great point. I mean, it's I mean, it's fun to mock the silliness of it. And if they are upset about the eradication of airlines uh, being mentioned in this, perhaps Democrats should have written it better. But the serious nature of this is that all of the primary candidates have thus far endorsed this. And that's why yep. it's funny. But at the same time, it's absolutely terrifying. Scary. Absolutely. And Cory Booker is the other one. All right, Dana Lass, thanks so much for mm. being with us. And Tatum is director of urban outreach with Turning Point USA, and he joins me now. Good evening, Brandon. Thanks for having me on.
Oh, my pleasure. Listen, I, I don't get anything anymore. I, I don't even get the title. It's the Green New Deal. Why not just the Green Deal? Why is it the Green New Deal? I don't expect you to give me an answer, but I want to start with this, Brandon. In my open, I talked about the last 10 days and how the left has taken off its mask and revealed the true socialists that they are. Everything from uh, uh, infanticide to, you know, cows. Uh, what's your take on what's happened in the last 10 days and, and socialism as it appears to be creeping into the mainstream of the Democrat Party? Yes, it is. I think during the State of the Union address is where I first I kind of felt the effects of how deranged the left is becoming when they stand and pat themselves on the back for jobs for women. And yet when it comes to reproductive situations for women, young women who are unborn, they would sit on their hands and not show respect for, um, you know, I guess disapproval for late term abortions. And then the new green disaster, a new green crazy deal. I don't know what you want to call it, but it is the craziest document that I have ever read. If you want to have a man manifesto for the disaster and the destruction of a great nation. You can just read that document. It's, it is ridiculous. And I mean, what what upsets you most? The idea that they don't want planes in the sky, the idea that they want to print money to pay for it, or the idea that they want to tear down and rebuild virtually every building. Like you say, what do you start with? Like, how about the White House? Do we start with the White House or do we just take down the Pentagon? I mean, what are they thinking? I don't think they're thinking at all. They have no plan to pay for these things. And I read, oh, I read yes, the they do. They're going to print the money. Call, <laughs> which is not going to be effective. So again, they have no way to pay for it. It's going to cost a trillion dollars a year to function. And I heard a gentleman on the television just earlier. I guess he's a mentor to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And he said that they're not saying that planes will not fly in the sky, but they're going to produce something that will make planes obsolete. You're going to ask us to pay all that money and pay all of these taxes for something that you don't even think will work. It's absolutely ridiculous. And, and I don't understand how people can support this. Kamala Harris signed off on it. I think Cory Booker signed off on it. These people are literally setting themselves up for failure in 2020. You know, but it's like everything else, Brandon. You know, it, it's like the left saying we want porous borders. We don't care that 90 percent of the drugs come through or human trafficking or, or, or child. Uh, they don't care about that. It's, it's an agenda that is it's un, it's uncanny. I can't figure it out. Yeah, they don't care about America. It's, it's obvious to uh, most people in America. And I hope that people would do their research and not just look at one channel, but do some research and understand exactly what they're doing. Open borders don't work. Drugs are pouring into our country. The president has said it a thousand times. I don't understand how anybody can love this country and then support not securing the border and support ending sex trafficking and all of the other things that come from the South. And and that's not the only thing that's problematic in our country. I don't understand why anybody want to destroy our economy by raising taxes mm -hmm. and giving everybody free jobs. That's not how it works. That's not how our society was built. And I'm not standing for it. All right. Brandon Tatum, thanks so much. We'll be right back.